Hello, hello, it's me, the Business Ma, and I'm back with a video. Finally, the Business Ma has come back to your screens. So, the business of esports, it's nothing new. It really is nothing new. It's just now that I'm getting around to talking about it because it's been around since as long as, as long as games have been there, people have been competing. People have been watching. People have been paying attention. People have been in awe. So, it doesn't matter what, what we're talking about here. It doesn't matter it, that it's in a computerized form. Competition, sport has existed since the dawn of time. The Romans in the Colosseums battling for a victor. Spectator sport. People want to watch. They want to watch. Build it and they will come. It's the same thing with esports. And as a matter of fact, it's only set to get bigger. In the UK, we are slow, we're behind, but we're catching up, we're about to get there. And it, I'm about to run through some, some key information. Get ready. Here is an article posted by the British Esports Association, and them themselves trace it back to beginning somewhere in the regions of the 1980s, which is pretty far back, let's be honest. But they're basically saying it's nothing new. Come on, it started with things like Space Invaders, Donkey Kong, it evolved through things like Street Fighter, Quake 3, and let's be honest, in this modern world where we have online gaming, it's very present when you look at Halo, Call of Duty, FIFA, and Tekken. The thing that drives most spectator sports and, well, any sort of sport entirely, whether it's the Olympics, whether it's local grassroots football, is the ability to be able to see talent, see the difference between it, and visibly see it applied in competition, in live form, in practice. And that's something which you get from at every stage of esports. You could have a pro match up against a complete beginner. You could have two pros, you could have two beginners, and it's you can see the levels at each point and they're clearly distinguished. You yourself can feel it and the more and more you watch you understand the differences between them. Um, the fact that it's esports doesn't make it any different. You know, there's still a, a talent pool. There's still uh, a national identity when it comes to competing between uh, USA and the UK, Japan and Korea. It's still there. You know, you have the same sorts of rules and structures, ways that people get, can get disqualified, ways you can qualify for events and tournaments and and everything from from uh, regional things, online things. Uh, it, it's everywhere. You know. What else do I need to talk about? The the viewer base, you know, it's it's a reality that because of the way that online is going, if you're streaming something, it's accessible to many many people at once. You've got Facebook Live, you've got Twitter Live, you've got Periscope, you've got Meerkat, you've got Instagram Live, you've got Live on PlayStation, you've got every avenue to broadcast what you're doing. So. The fact that esports is catching up now, it's gonna explode. It's gonna explode because people are tuning in, and it's not the fact that you can stream from any platform, you can watch it from any platform. You could be on your phone, you could be in the underground in London, and you could still be watching uh, a grand final. A grand final. Come on, that is the level of exposure is astronomical. What else do you have in terms of esports compared to normal sports? You also have uh, detractors, people who are against that sport, people think it's ridiculous, people who won't conf completely buy into it. But in reality, it's just probably not their cup of tea. Or whether it's their cup of tea or not, they've not seen the opportunity that lies in an industry uh, capitalising on people's interests, people's common common likes and and. You know, there's lots of different avenues when it comes to sports. What else do you have? Fans. Fans, supporters, they're the main thing. They are the ones who drive it. They are the reason why people take part quite to a, to a, to a degree. Because, you know, the, if a tree falls in the forest and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? It's the same thing with esports. If you defeat someone and you do the best combo, you score the best goal, you pull off the best play, and no one's around to see it, did you really do it? Not so, not 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 particularly to be fair, so that is a major part of esports, major major part, major part of life and sports in general. Having your supporters, having your fans, having the people who let you know when you're doing well, as well as when you're doing bad, people who pick you up when you're down, 
they are key. When it comes to FIFA, they are starting to catch up with the fighting game community. Um, people are being signed professionally. You've got Manchester City, you've got Paris Saint-Germain for PSG in France, you've got AS Roma in Italy. It's starting to take shape. And one thing that's common in all of these different uh, platforms is the fact that they are ordinary, everyday looking people. They are not, uh, they're no different from you and I, is what I'm trying to say. When I say they're no different to you and I, it's true. You're going to have your antagonists, your protagonists, your heroes, your villains. They're all going to be there. You know, we can really connect with esports and when it's, when it's um, of that level, because it, we see it in everyday life, in every other form, whether it's your colleagues at work, whether it's your friends at, in the park, whether it's um, any anything at all. Come on, let's be serious. So those similarities between yourself, the esports players, the real players, you see that how you can how you engage and how it relates to yourself. You can see the people who don't give up. You can see the people who have pure, uh, unrefined talent. You see the people who. Uh, just basically give it all and with that it's very much a case of you're going to have the highlights you're going to have those moments you look back on it, you remember it and you'll never forget that moment when that player scored that goal in that minute and conquered the world you will not forget it there is prize money the prize money is becoming astronomical a FIFA player recently won $160,000 for coming first and basically being crowned the best of Ultimate Team, which is one game mode. It's not even everything. The second place person won $80,000. And these, this is its first year. First year. That is only FIFA we're talking about. We can see here the top 20, 25 or so people in esports for 2017. 2017. Who sits at the top is a young man from Korea who has earned three hundred thousand dollars this year alone in prize money. At number sixteen, I'll direct your attention to Chevron Corinthian, otherwise known as Rocky, who is number sixteen. However, he won the top prize in Ultimate Team, which I mentioned, and he's sitting at one hundred and seventy-four thousand dollars. Twenty seventeen isn't over. We're halfway through. Those numbers are going to go up. Now, I've talked about how esports is very much uh, the same as normal sports in terms of the, the individual people, the uh, competition, talent, and of course, just the general things that go into it. Um, but you have to remember that there's a massive scope of roles there to be played by everyone who's involved. You know, you're going to have the people who do the lighting, the cameras the commentating, the analysis, the hosting, developing, coaching, planning, negotiating, journalism. But within all of that, we're going to see a lot of the human aspects, which is the psychology, the nerves. And you don't have all the pro stuff. You do get the casual, casual side of things. But what I'm trying to say is that with most things, once it really hones in on those basic things that us as humans look for and then it begins to grow the sky is basically the limit i'm going to show you another infograph before this is over but this is something which you need to remember i am the business ma we just got down to some business i think you should do some research right about now i'm going to post all of the links i've used in the description box however i strongly encourage you to take up an interest in this since you bother to click on it in the first place you definitely have your head screwed on but the business of esports is astronomical. So stay tuned for some more from myself. And yes, we just got down to some business.